cross is not enough. I love that song. I remember singing that Jared years ago. We were uh, traveling as a family and singing in the street. And the Lord pastored at the time. But we had some wonderful times in the Lord. And uh, thank you, Matt. That's been cool. Uh, we were discussing that at home. Uh, Jamie and I will be this coming April 25th will celebrate the Hi there, it's so pretty Hi guys. This. And uh, the, uh, we were talking about how long we had actually sang together, ministered together in 45 years. That doesn't seem possible. That doesn't seem possible. Happy birthday, Talon. I know that he's probably slipping out with the rest of the young folks. But he turned 15 this week. I told him, I said, hey, old man. He looked at me real funny. I said, no, seriously. Enjoy your 15th birthday. Because when you blink, you'll be my age. You'll be 59. And uh, he acted like he didn't believe me, but a lot of you know that's true. <laughs> Don't blink. It goes by quick. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. God is so amazing in our life, and I think sometimes we fail to realize just how amazing He really is. And I, I look at the Word of the Lord, and He tells us that He led captivity captive, and He gave gifts unto men. And I want you to know that you're a gift to me, each of you. You may not realize it, you may not think it, but uh, if uh, I could take just the opportunity this morning to share with you, the, the blessing that each of you are in my life. And I want you to know that I appreciate your prayers. I appreciate uh, uh, your support of this ministry. And I'm believing that God is going to do some amazing things in 2021 with the God Bay Family Worship Center. Not just on live stream, not just uh, as we assemble in this place, but I believe that God is going to give us a level of impact in the lives of those around us in which we have to do. I feel like that our sphere of influence is going to grow. And we say, well, what do you mean when you say your sphere of influence? I, I believe that as we continue in the things of the Lord, God wants to impact your families. How many got family that need to be saved? I do. I've been on this road for 45 years carrying the gospel. I remember the first time that I uh, came home to my dad's house after church, my mom and my dad, who were divorced, had an arrangement. She picked us up for church on Sunday morning, that Sunday morning that I got saved. I remember walking into the, to the house where my dad lived, and I remember he was coming up the stairs as I was going down. He was remodeling his basement. He, he, he was a phenomenal craftsman. And I remember stopping midway of the stairs, and I asked him, I said, Dad, I have to ask you a question. And I'm eight years old, okay? So... Dad is interested in what's going on in my life, of course. And so he wants to hear what I have to say. And I said, Dad, I need to ask you a question, and it's very important. I need to know if you're saved and if you're ready to go home to be with the Lord when you get ready to go. And he says to me, he said, Son, he said, uh, you know I've not been able to do many things in my life because of the way he, he, he come from the background, he felt like that he could never teach, never preach again. When he was a young man, he carried his Bible to church every Sunday. Uh, they told him how that he smiled and laughed, and then something happened, and life changed, and there was a shift. And he really never answered that question. told me that I was proud. he was proud of me when I went to Russia as a missionary. He told me he was proud of me when I went to Haiti as a missionary. And getting close to death, I was still uncertain. And I said, God, I'm, Dad, I'm not ready for you to go. He had had chest compressions where they broke his ribs. And I think he was in a lot of pain. We had flown home from Florida to be with him. We had been on a cruise. And when I got there, he, he seemed good. But he was in a lot of pain because they had resuscitated him, started his heart back. Every bone in his chest was broken. And I leaned across his bed and I said, I'm not ready for you to go. He leaned up on one shoulder and 
raised himself up. I've been pastoring now for more than 30 years at that time. And he looked me square in the eye, Foster, and he said, Son, you of all people should know that we do not have eternal life here. And I thought, wow. Later that evening, a dear friend of mine, Mon Stack and Fender, uh, and Brother Doug Morgan came into the hospital room and, and asked my father a very pertinent question. I said, Randall, who is Jesus to you? He did the same thing as he rolled up on that shoulder, pulled the mask down off of his face, and he says, I don't know who he is to you, but he's my Lord and Savior. And I knew. I knew. That was the question that I needed answered as an eight-year-old boy. We'd spent a lot of time together on the lake. We'd spent a lot of time together in the field. We had felt, spent a lot of time, you know, working and doing certain things. But he would never discuss where he stood with God. Oh, he had Bibles in his house and all of those things. I hear the Lord today say, choose you this day. Who will you serve? And I believe that God is calling the people of God to stand strong, not just in where they go to church or what they've experienced as a child going to church or what other people have done in their life, but I believe that God is calling people to make a decision who they're going to serve. Now I know that uh, the Apostle Paul gave direction concerning some things. And the Word of God says that Jesus led captivity captive and He gave gifts unto men for a purpose that we would come into the unity of the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man or a mature man in the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the sliding of men and the cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive but speak the truth in love that we may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. And I believe that God would have us to have an understanding as to who we are in him. You know, a lot of people say, well, I hope so. No, you don't have to hope so. You can know so. If a man believes in his heart and confesses Christ with his mouth, he's saved. When he begins to call on God for direction, listen, there's a purpose that God wants to fulfill in you, and it's just not so that you can sit in the pew or go home and say, well, didn't we have a good church service? Uh, I believe God wants to bring you to an instrumental work in the presence of God uh, that impacts lives. Well, that's not just the preacher's uh, uh, aspect of living. That's not just the Sunday school teacher's uh, aspect of living. That should be every child of God's measure uh, given as the ministry of reconciliation. In the fifth chapter of the book of Ephesians, I love this, the scripture says, Be you therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved and, 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 and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. And verses 3 and 4 begins to begin to dig into our lifestyles. I know a lot of people don't say, well, you don't talk about my lifestyle. I, I believe in Jesus and we're okay with each other. But I believe that we need to begin to look at lifestyle. Does our life become that which is pertinent to the work of God? I believe in the book of Titus, the word of God says in chapter 2, that the grace that has been given us of the salvation teaches us to abstain from fleshly lust. To go away from the things that would divide us and take us away from God. So I want you to see this. God wants us to be a separate people. I, I know that uh, uh, folks have, have misunderstood me for years and said, well, what's wrong with him? I can tell you this. I am strange. I am weird. I tell my wife this all the time. I must be the weird one. Because I believe in setting a precedence uh, with the Word of God. I believe in setting ourselves uh, in a way that is pleasing to God, not men. Because, see, a lot of people say, well if, well, if it feels good, do it. Let me tell you something. That was a message of, of my time in the 60s and 70s when I was growing up. But let me tell you this. I, I have watched those uh, that have followed the, the pretense of the enemy that said, if it feels good, do it. Uh, have suffered much destruction. Uh, have felt much pain. Uh, and the word of the Lord says that they that seek uh, after the riches of the world uh, and the pleasures of life uh, have pierced themselves through with many sorrows. 
Not understanding and discerning the things of the Spirit of God. I believe that as we begin to focus our attention on some things, look at what the Scripture says. But fornication and uncleanliness and covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become saints. In other words, if you're walking in accordance with God's Word, you're not going to be dabbling over here in the world. If you're walking in accordance with God's Word and you want the power of God to reign in your life uh, and you want the unction uh, of the Holy Ghost to flow through you like rivers uh, of living water, uh, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, you've got to get the pig uh, out of the stream uh, before the water tastes good. You're wondering what's up. I heard that message uh, years ago and it was uh, about a missionary uh, and they were going through a, a, a huge plague uh, in, in, the, in the things of this little, uh, little group of people. And there was problems everywhere, sickness everywhere. Couldn't figure it out. People were dying of fever. Didn't know what was going on. Until somebody got the idea, we need to check the water source. And as they went up the, the, the head of the spring, uh, where the water was coming out of the mountain and running down, uh, there had been a, 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 a fallow deer had died in that stream uh, and had rotted in that stream. Uh, and you can imagine what rotting flesh uh, will do to the waters uh, that they were drinking. Pretty soon everybody was sick uh, in the camp. Can I tell you today that we as a nation uh, may not see that pile of deer uh, hunkered over and fallen in the stream, uh, but there have been things that have happened uh, in this nation uh, that is causing uh, a stink uh, in the nostrils of God. Uh, there are things that are happening uh, in this land uh, that you've got to get the pig uh, out of the creek uh, in order to get a good clean drink of water. Yes. And what we need to do is begin to say, Lord, uh, create in me a clean heart uh, and a right spirit. Lord, Challenge me. This is what he says. Uh, but fornication and uncleanliness uh, and covetousness, uh, let it not be once named among you uh, as become saints, neither filthiness nor foolish uh, uh, talking uh, nor jesting, uh, which are not convenient, uh, but rather giving of thanks. I, I believe that we need to begin to say, Lord, uh, create in me a clean heart uh, and a right spirit. Let me deal with my brother uh, as my brother. Uh, if there's any that has fault uh, or if there's anyone that has a, an ought against you. Uh, let me tell you what the word of the Lord says. Uh, and I spoke this even this week uh, to a dear lady. Uh, I said, first of all, uh, you don't need to go to everybody in the family uh, of what's going on. You need to go to that individual. Uh, don't you involve everybody else uh, because when you do, uh, you create a sore. Uh, you create a stink. Uh, and then guess what happens? Uh, there is no healing to that. The only way to get the, through that is to cut off watched gun smoke the other night and there was an Indian boy had been shot in the leg and no attention had been given to that wound. Let me tell you what happens when you don't give attention to a wound. It will begin to fester and rotting flesh will turn into gangrene. And then guess what? That limb or, or that arm or that leg has to come off or you die. Let me tell you this. God is not about separating the body of Christ. He would much rather healing and restoration. He would much rather the presence of God to pour in the oil and the wine. The sound of the Holy Ghost to bring healing. For this you know that no whoremonger nor unclean person nor covetous man who is an idolater hath an inheritance in the kingdom of God. I'm going to tell you something. A whole lot of folks today are saying Jesus, Jesus, Jesus sweetest name I know. But let me tell you this, you can't sing Oh How I Love Jesus on Tuesday and then go, you know, and then begin to vote for, for abortion and the things that are abhorrent to God. You can't do that on Sunday and then go Tuesday and vote, well, I'm going to do this, this, and this. No, it doesn't work that way. Let the heart of man be clean or let it be putrid. For the Word of God is clear that we're living in a time that we're going to have to separate ourselves from the world. This world is not my home. Oh yeah, I have an anchor here. I, I have a home and I, I have a, a job to do. But let me tell you this. The purpose of God is for the salvation of souls. Amen. Folks, if you're worried about getting your children into college and through college, stop that. Listen, you're, you're working. it's not a matter of getting them to Harvard. It's a matter of getting them to Christ. Yeah. That's your job. The Word of the Lord says to train up your children in the way they should go. And when they're old, they won't depart from it. 
The Word of God is clear that children are to obey their parents in the Lord, for this is right. We're to honor our father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, uh, that if we will honor our father and mother, uh, our days would be long upon the earth. Scripture says we're only promised three score and ten at 70 years old. Let me tell you something. But by obedience and walking with integrity, God lengthens the life. I, I saw the other day where somebody was 104 years old. And you know what happened? They want to know, well, what did you do? What did you do to have such a wonderful life and a good life? I mean, this person has, has got the right mind. They move, not so fast anymore, but they move. They do the things they want to. Bob Nisbet's mother's up there 98, 99. I asked her, you've got a strong constitution. She says, no, I have served God all my life. And when you ask me a question, I'll have to write it down because I may forget it. And please excuse me if I repeat myself. But my mind is not what it used to be. But can I tell you this? When you begin to talk scripture with her, when you begin to speak things concerning the word of God over her, guess what? She is as sharp as a tack. And her Bible is not on her table, but in the mind of her spirit. And she can begin to tell you that when God began to deal with her as a young woman, and God began to do this, and God began to teach her this, and God began to prosper her this, let me tell you this, her husband was an engineer, but let me tell you what, that he was also a man of God. happens when you honor your parents. You see a lot of foolhardy things happening today. People rejecting the word of God, rejecting the purpose of God, and rejecting the salvation of God. But the word of the Lord would have us to be clear. Let no man deceive you with vain words. Because of these the, comes the, the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Now, I believe that there is a spirit, and I, and I can share this with you very quickly, but I, I won't go into detail in the teaching of it because I don't want to take up time, but I'll have you to be encouraged uh, that the word of the Lord says that in the last days, uh, God is going to pour His spirit out uh, upon all flesh. Uh, and I believe that as He pours His spirit out, uh, we read over in the ninth chapter of the book of Revelation uh, that there's also going to be some things opened up uh, in the war uh, against God's plan. Uh, and the enemy says, says that he's also going to pour out wicked spirits in the land. Don't know if you know this or not, but there's already a teaching coming about. A lot of folks are wondering, well, how are we going to explain and what are people going to say when the catching away takes place? Fox News has got it on. Newsmax has it on. I don't watch the other networks, so I couldn't tell you what they have on. But I can tell you this. There's been an uncovering and a declassification of everything that went on out in, is it Roswell? They're showing that we could not be where we are today without the extraterrestrials. <laughs> Saying without aliens, we could not understand magnetic power. And without going into too much detail, there's a lot that we could not do without the understanding of atomic energy. But Roswell opened that up through them capturing the aliens that are making that possible. And over the years, you've heard it, I've heard it, about alien abductions. So what's going to happen when millions of Christians leave this earth? It's going to be blamed on the aliens. I've seen video already of Space travel, ships, extraterrestrials flying in the sky that are unexplained. And somebody says, well, Pastor, what is that? I said, I can tell you what it is. It's demonic activity being heightened and poured out of the earth. You watch what the word of the Lord says concerning these things. Open your ear. Listen, a lot of folks say, well, what do you want to do when they start talking about this? I said, I'm going to take them to the word of God. I'm going to take you to the well and give you a drink of God's word that explains this in detail.
detail concerning the end times. Yes. A lot of people don't want to hear that. Oh, you don't believe in science. Let me tell you, I believe in the God, the creator of science. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Let me tell you this. Not only does he know every hair on your head, he knows every vein in your body. He is able to cleanse it. He is able to purify it with this one touch of his blessing. Let me tell you this. God begins to stir in the lives of his people. And if we will hear his voice, Scripture says that we walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. But God, oh hallelujah, but God, who is rich in mercy, wherewith he loved us, he, he has given us not only the gift of life through salvation in him, <laughs> but he will birth knowledge. He will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Jesus Christ to open your eyes. Listen, folks, a, a lot of people are, are mystified by the things that are happening in the earth right now. But let me tell you, you haven't seen anything yet. You begin to look at what the word of the Lord described uh, to John while he was on the Isle of Patmos uh, and the things that he began to show him. Uh, I could not, you know, I have not seen nor ear heard uh, nor even entered the heart of man the things that God has prepared uh, for them that love him. But the Spirit of God will bring wisdom and revelation and show you things to come. Amen. A lot of folks don't want to hear that, but that's the truth. Let no man deceive you with vain words because of these things come the wrath of God on the children of disobedience. Be not therefore partakers with them. I said do not therefore be partakers with them. For you were sometimes in darkness but now are in the light of the Lord. Walk as children of the light. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. You know, I, I don't have to boast or brag that I'm a king's kid. I believe that the blessings of God will come upon you and overtake you. Yes. Not because you're proud. Not because you're full of, 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 of arrogance. A lot of people mistake the anointing of God and they can't differentiate the difference between arrogance and anointing. You didn't hear me. There's a level of arrogance in some folks that will render you, cheer you, in order to get gain. There are those that suppose that gain is godliness. The Word of God says, from such, withdraw yourself, for they serve not God, but their own belly. Well, if I could just break it down to you this, this morning just a little bit. We have seen different phases of the church through for many years. We have. We've seen charlatans come along and people would give their last dime. I've watched little ladies write out their check, couldn't pay their light bill, but give the preacher money. when probably the church should be taking an offering to help the little woman because she was a widow and didn't have enough to make it. You want to know what pure religion and undefiled is? Is to visit the fatherless. Listen, we have a fatherless generation. Oh, dad may be in the picture, but he's not a father. He's a drug dealer. He's a pimp. He's one that is taking advantage of children. Buy him a new Xbox and take it out the back door and sell it for drugs. Don't tell me it don't happen. I talk to kids, and I know parents that have gone through the very same thing, and God is not pleased. Yeah. Talking about kids that need a day. Yeah. Yes. Don't know how to behave like young gentlemen and grow up to be strong men because they don't have the example. Yeah. Amen, preacher. Get it this morning. You're giving them good stuff. Glory to God. I'll, 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 I'll pray to excuse me, but sometimes I have to amen myself. Because <laughs> it ain't me, it's God. 
God speaking this morning to you to bring you to an understanding of the times in which we're living in. And we wonder why. We need fathers. Not just preachers. We need daddies. That are going to teach their children how to love and how to respect you know what's wrong today? We think we're saying today that women are, are far worse than men today. Young women are far worse. Young ladies act worse than young men today. Do you know why that is? It's because daddies never taught their children how to act in public. Daddies never taught their children how to be chaste. Daddies never taught their children how to respect one another. That's right. And we, listen, Brother Tamar, isn't that true? You, you are amongst young men every day that need a daddy. They don't know how to act because they haven't been shown or taught the very word of God. You know what? I talk to young ladies all the time and say, you know what? I fear not being able to find a husband because all these young men today are jerks. They don't know how to treat a woman. Now, where did that come from? Broken families, children lost and without mom and dad. But I can tell you this, I'm a testimony of a broken home. Somebody got a hold of me with the word of God. My mother began to pray over me. I, it was in the divorce decree. A lot of people don't see this today, but in the divorce decree, I had it. That it my, after my mom's passing, I went through her, her, her personal papers and I found the divorce decree that it declared in 1963. typed in and initialed that the boys would be in church somewhere on Sunday morning. Didn't matter if he was on a fishing trip. Didn't matter if he was on a hunting trip. Didn't matter if it was your weekend or her weekend. They're to be in church on Sunday morning. Let it be decreed by the court. Let me tell you something. They don't have decrees like that today. But can I tell you, uh, Mr. Ronald Reagan, as he addressed uh, uh, the, 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 the Mississippi, it was an Alabama uh, state legislator that he was addressing, and he said, listen to me. May I just pause for a moment and remind you that this is not for question. The church is not to be censured by the government. And the freedom of speech the, the First Amendment was quoted not to keep the church from speaking the presence of God's Word into the communities, but rather so that the government could not interfere with tyranny against the church. Yes. You want to read it? I'll get you the quote. The Word of God has come under such censorship and we need to begin to release God's word in the lives of individuals because you know what? We're living in a time of tyranny. The word of the Lord says, know this, in the last days perilous times are coming. We're living in those perilous times. Men have become lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. They have been, been truce breakers, incontinent fears, lovers of pleasure more than the things of the Spirit of the Lord. Be not partakers with them. Is what the word of the Lord is speaking here. Can anybody say amen? amen? For you who were sometimes in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. For as the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is that acceptable unto the Lord. Verse 11 says, and this is Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11 says, and have no fellowship. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yes. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Now I'm going to tell you something. We're living in times right now where that our government is doing backroom deals. Yes. Secrecy from the people. Where I read the word of the Lord declares it like this. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. 
for whatsoever doth make manifest his light. Wherefore saith the Lord, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. That tells me that there's going to be some things exposed. Now I'm going to tell you this right now. In 2021, there's going to be some things exposed that are going to probably cause you to shake and tremble. Many of you already know some of the tidbits or the high places, but I don't think we know the half of it. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. I believe that it's time that we redeem every moment that we have with God. Some folks ask me why I do what I do when I'm sitting in a restaurant, remove my mask, and the waiter comes to the table and before she or he can ask me anything. Says, I usually catch their name tag. I like to do that. Whether it's Penny or Rob, Lucy, Jill, or John, I try to call them by name. And I'll ask them, how's your day going today? And generally they'll say, well, I'm having a good day. Thanks for asking. Some ask me, why do I do that, Tommy? I'll tell you why. When Jesus, in John chapter 4, met the woman at the well, opening conversation led to prophetic word that was able to teach and lead her to a place of salvation and deliverance. See, you don't want to miss an opportunity with folks. Folks will come and enjoy a meal, and oftentimes use their server almost as a servant. I've sat with people that get upset. You put too much ice in my drink. I know people that will find something wrong with the meal. So they get a discount or don't have to pay for it. Not understanding that this young woman or this young man is trying to pay bills to get through college, to make ends meet. So you miss the whole picture of why they're there in the first place. It's not there just to see your smiling face. <laughs> Come on, there's things that are happening in their life that they're there working through. Amen. I have met young people that were working their way through school in order to help their family. I have met young people there that were there that have no uh, future ahead of them. They don't have an education uh, and they're trying to make it with a baby. And while somebody else that they don't even know is watching their child, they're trying to earn a living to get past where they've been in the in order to get to a future that's going to be a blessing. You know that you have the opportunity to be an encourager. You have the opportunity to lift their spirit for the day. Amen. You don't know what they're going through. You don't know how close they are to going over the edge. What if you spoke a word of blessing over them? Or even better yet, speak a word of blessing and leave a nice tip. The other day I came through Chick-fil-A. And I mean they are on it. Traffic wrapped three times around the building. And the only reason I went is because my grandchildren absolutely love Chick-fil-A. And I love what they, read, what they stand for. They're closed on Sunday. But far exceed in revenues, what other restaurants are trying to do and sell. Well, I no sooner pull the line and this happy-faced young man says, how can I help you, sir? And I said, well, I'm here to get some food. And my grandson says, they'll take your order now. <laughs> right? 
I used to wait until I get to that box, squawk box, and <laughs> you look at the thing. Let me tell you, they had my order, and by the time I got to the squawk, squawk box, I had my food. It was gone. I mean, they've got it down pat, yeah. how to serve. Yeah. And I said, you know what? It is clear that this organization is ran by people of God. Yeah. I got home and I called them. <laughs> and the manager answered and said, yes, how can I help you? And I said, yes, I was just up and uh, got quite a large order. And I just thought it would be nice. And he said, did they miss something? I said, no. But I'm not going to miss the opportunity to tell you that you folks got it going on. I have never ever in my life had such wonderful service with a smile, pleasantries. My food was hot. My drinks were cold. And you folks did such a wonderful job, I just had to call and say thank you. And he says, well, I appreciate that. He says, it's not always that I get calls just saying, you did a great job. He said, sometimes it's not so nice. And I said, well, I just want you to know that you did a phenomenal job. And I'm impressed by the way that you do business. And he said, thank you. And you know what? I'm still impressed with him. You know, we, we need to not just say, hey, they did a good job, but to support that business. From now on, when I want a chicken sandwich, I can tell you where I'm going. Amen? Amen. So the word is clear. That we're living in those times. He says, Awake thou that sleepeth, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore be you not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Have you ever questioned that in your life? What's the will of God in my life? Well, I can tell you what you're, you're looking for. The approval of God. The blessing of God. And as you open your heart to receive of Him, know this. No weapon formed against you is going to prosper. Amen. Put away from you the, the speaking of vanities and, and questioning God. Let God be God in your life. He's never missed a moment in life. I've expressed this many times that when the lights went out in Egypt, they were on in Goshen. God has and will and continues to bless His people. Amen. You don't have to worry. Know that He is God. Even in the midst of adversity. Can I tell you that in the midst of, ad of adversity, in times of trouble, He has always been a present help in time of trouble. Amen. And I'll share with you this in closing. Some of my greatest breakthroughs. How in the world can you have victory without conflict? Have you ever thought about that? Some of my greatest victories have come on the heels of adversity. Some of my greatest breakthroughs were just when I thought the lights were going out. And he has never failed me. And he's always been on time, even when I felt like, what time is it? <laughs> Amen? Amen? He's there. And he is near to them that are of a broken and contrite spirit. So in all of the pressures of life, I, I had the opportunity yesterday just to encourage a, a friend of mine, he's a pastor, and his wife went into the hospital with an extremely high blood pressure. Nothing going on, just, you know, nothing. heart's good, everything's fine. But you know the body sometimes reacts to the pressures of life. Jeremiah, I believe it was, it said we're of all men subject to like passion. I believe that was Elijah. And so when we understand that there's times where it may get a little heavy, Someone asked me one time, how did I de dealt with everything that comes to my plate? And I said, you know what? I don't always do this, but I'm learning to do this. When someone hands me something that's heavy, I hand it to God. He's much bigger than I. And he is faithful.
problems. Amen? Amen? So if you've got things that are difficult in your life, don't run from it. Don't hide from it. And certainly don't act like that it's not existing because it's in that place that it begins to build up in your flesh. And something has to give. Amen. The word of the Lord says in the last days, young men's hearts are, are literally going to fail. I love the passage of Scripture, and I, I love the Word. I, I love the, the things that the Word brings in my spirit. It causes my heart to leap at times, and the Lord deals with me in dreams. And I would share this with you to encourage you. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the Creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There's no searching of his understanding. I've said before, God's not nervous, folks. He's not wringing his hands at the light of what's going on in Washington, D.C. today. The word of the Lord says, gives, he gives power to the faith and to them that have no might. He increases strength. You're going to find in life that there's going to be those that create their own storm and then cry when it's raining. If you think about that, that's a little deep, isn't it? Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk not faint. Former police officer, I heard a story not long ago about a retired state patrolman. Up in his 70s, he and his wife were out shopping for grandchildren down at the Dayton Mall. A uh, young fellow forced himself between him and this former state patrolman's car, forcing him to open his car. And what proceeded next was not pretty. Because the state patrolman, though he was old, older, had training on how to handle a situation like that. And witnesses said that the young man was lying on the ground crying, begging the former police officer not to hit him again. And when the police arrived, the young man was arrested for attempted robbery. I like gun smoke. Watched a movie last night, and Matt Dillon being old and retired and gray-headed and slumped over, was accused of stealing horses at his daughter's way. They came to arrest him. He said, no, you're not going to arrest me, but I'll go with you. They wanted to put handcuffs on him. He says, you're not putting handcuffs on me, but I'll go with you. They got him out into the bush and decided that they were going to kill Matt Dillon. Because they were part of the horse stealing ring. Not really with the sheriff's department. Big mistake. If you've ever watched Gunsmoke, <laughs> Matt may get a bullet in the side or shot in the arm, but he don't go down. <laughs> but his words is what really struck me this time. Experience. Experience. Young people don't look at folks with gray hair and dim eyes as if they are out of touch or unwise. I can guarantee you that wisdom 
that is brought from a man that is, has experience will keep you alive in trouble. Yeah. Get you to a safe place if you need it. You say, well, that's silly. No, it's not. One of my favorite songs by Casting Crowns is City on a Hill. Listen to that sometimes. We need each other. tell you the times I'd like to pick up the phone and just hear my grandfather's voice. I can't tell you how the last two and a half years have been that I've actually picked up the phone to call my mother, only to remember she's not there. See, it's the wisdom of those that are older than you. That can carry you to new places in the Lord. Amen. And let me share this thing with you. When you realize the things that you're going through right now are not necessarily for you, but for them that are coming behind you, that's when God can really use you. Amen? Amen. I'm going to ask that we stand all across this building. And right where you are, I'm just going to ask you to bow your hearts before the Lord, if you would just bow your heads. And I, I want to encourage you today just to take a few moments, take spiritual inventory of where you are. I'm not talking about what, what, what's going on in the family, I'm not talking about what's going on at work, I'm not talking about the situations even between husband and wife. I want to ask you to evaluate where you are personally with God.
minister your grace and we're careful to give you glory. In Jesus' name. Father, 